On Thursday, the House session started with a surprise motion to retain House Speaker Mike Moyle, in other words, a vote of support. The motion came with little debate or commentary from visibly frustrated House members and ultimately passed unanimously. It is a sad day for Idaho when we come to this point where we're wasting time on this motion when we should be doing the business of Idaho. I urge you to support this motion and our whole leadership and move on. Roll call shows 69 ayes, zero nay, one absent excused, the majority having voted in favor of the motion, the speaker will be retained. Right after that vote, Republicans went into caucus. A few hours later, they announced that they had voted to remove Representative Megan Blanksma as majority leader. Here to discuss that vote is Representative Megan Blanksma. Thank you so much yeah, for yeah, joining sure. me. Uh, Happy was, to be here. Was this a surprise for you? I don't know if it was a surprise or not. It, it's been, obviously, if you've been watching, the session has been difficult and there's been some challenges. There have been disagreements among leadership on um, how things were going and how we were operating. And I think that is part of what was going on. Can you expand on those differences in leadership? Yeah, well, I, I think that it's always my responsibility to represent my constituents of District 8. That, that's always the responsibility. And I felt that some of the things that were happening as far as legislation moving forward and processes that were changed um, weren't weren't contributing to the welfare of the constituents of District 8. And I had some concerns, and I was vocal about those concerns. Are you talking about the changes to the budgeting committee? Because you were the only member of leadership who voted against the budget during that big debate on Wednesday. Um, how big a part was that in, in this vote and in this conflict? Yeah, I, I think that that was when it all came to a head. More than anything, I think there were other underlying issues. But yeah, I, I had some pretty serious concerns about what they called maintenance budgets that I firmly believed that were not maintenance budgets. And what I thought a maintenance budget should be is that you fully fund to last year's levels for ongoing, you know, so keep the lights on, right? And when you looked at and look at these budgets, they don't do that there are some significant holes in them. And you will notice, however, I did not stand up and debate. I, I just voted no, because as a member of leadership, it, I felt that I didn't need to be making that point on the floor. That was one part of it. You, you mentioned that there were other things. What were some of those policy differences? Well, I think there's policy differences and operational differences. I, I have a different view than some of, there are 70 of us in the House, and we all re represent districts, and our vote is our own. And it's our job to represent them. And I, I think that when we get caught up in uh, trying to toe the line or not looking at what our district is and, and not representing our district, I, th I think we start running into problems. You're implying that there's some strong arming going on with Am within I? leadership, <laughs> maybe. I'm reading between the lines here. Do you have concerns about the way Speaker Moyle is is running the House? I, I, I'm not here to call anybody out. I am here because you asked me to be here, and I'm happy to do that. I, I, I think that you know we really just need to remember that that the vote that you have on the House floor is for your district, and that's who you should support. I can think of so many times when you know Speaker Moyle was majority leader and we had House Speaker Scott Bedke where those two voted differently from each other. Uh, so many major policy issues. Um, he was never voted out. Uh, he, he stayed in that position for, for many, many years. What's the difference here? Is it just policy or were there other factors? I, I think there were other factors, but I, I don't know that it's worth going over them. What happened happened, and you just go forward the best you can. Did launch play into this, or was that just one of the many policy differences that you had? Oh, I think that's definitely one of the many policy difference that we have. Um, I think it, Speaker Moyles made it clear that he doesn't support launch, doesn't support funding launch, and doesn't like the fact that it even hit the House floor and that it moved. I, I, that's, he's been very vocal about that. And in 2023, you were the sponsor of that I for was. viewers who, who don't remember. Do you think this jeopardizes launch, uh, re-upping launch this year? I think that launch has always been in jeopardy because the speaker is not in favor of launch. And I think that it, that 
the governor has a lot to do to get launch funded, and, and that's going to have to be on his shoulders to make sure that one of his policies moves. Can you give us an update on that, or are you as involved this year as you were last year? Well, I, I think that that is another gaping hole in the ed budget, right? When you see the ed budget that'll come across the floor, it does not fund launch. And if you look back, um, oh, I believe it was the, the special session where we said we were going to put $80 million into um, a in-demand careers fund, right? That was policy that was said. Uh, now there is some discussion about not putting that 80 million in, even though it was you know, policy that was done. Now, launch was the result of that policy, but I, the fact that the policy is not funded, even though it's in statute, I, I have difficulty with. After that vote, with so many of your fellow caucus members that you've worked with for so long, do you feel a sense of betrayal? It's politics. I, I think that you, you do your best and you just keep moving forward. And, it, and if you're going to get caught up on things like uh, you've been wronged or harmed or betrayed, you're not going to do very well. With that in mind, are you going to run for re-election in District 8? I, I want to represent my constituents. And so right now my plan is to run for District 8. It, 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 I've always said, you know, you, you do the best with what you, what you have. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I plan to run for re-election, re and I plan to run hard, and I think that I have done my best for my constituents, and, and that's important. Representative Megan Blanksma, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, thank you.